so yeah, I'm really glad that like Arturo, you know, uh, helped us connect. You know, I spoke with him. I told him, I asked him, hey, do you know any other cool entrepreneurs? He was like, yo, Isaac is my boy. He does like real estate and, and he flips <laughs> shoes, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I flip, sh I flip shoes like as a hobby. I'm not like this serious uh, shoe flipper, but uh, as you can see right over here, I have some shoes right there. And then in my closet, I have a bunch of shoes that I collect. Mm -hmm. And it's crazy because um, when COVID hit, I had all these shoes because I'm like a buy and hold guy. Mm -hmm. So I like to kind of like buy them and then hold them and then see them appreciate, right? And so um, I was holding on to these and COVID hit and I'm like, dude, I wasn't bringing in any business, you know, like sales were like people, people, people press the pause button. Right. Mm -hmm. And so they didn't know what was going to happen. There was a lot of uncertainty. Right. And so with all that, um, I didn't have, you know, any checks that were coming in. A lot of people were just like, Oh, I don't want to buy right now. Or I don't want to sell. So what I did was I had all these shoes in my closet that I just started listing on like StockX and Stadium Goods, all these websites, and I started selling them. And uh, I ended up being able to pay my bills from really? the shoes that I had. Yeah, yeah. So what everything that was in my inventory, I pretty much sold um, the majority of all the shoes just to keep me afloat on my bills. Mm -hmm. And it was crazy uh, because I guess it was just like perfect timing. Like I stacked them up and they were just there, you know, and I sold them and uh, I didn't have to like, I know a lot of people, they filed for unemployment. Um, they also get the, uh, they got the SBA uh, loans. Uh, I didn't get any help and I actually got a pretty cool story. Uh, uh, and I'll, I'll let you take over. So go ahead, ask nah, me whatever. I want to hear that story. But first, I got to ask this. So those shoes that you had, um, do you just collect shoes? Or were there shoes that like you literally just bought them and never wore them? Because me personally, I have shoes that I buy. And I would never wear them, maybe once in a blue moon. Yeah, so I, it's purely a hobby. Um, so I, I, have, um, I have a nephew. And so I was like, you know what? It would be cool to like collect these shoes and then give him, give him some shoes when he gets older, right? Because I used to be a card collector back in the day. Uh, so I have a bunch of old cards. Uh, I got like Kobe's rookie um, card. I got LeBron's. So I have a lot of, I'm just like, I like to collect. Mm -hmm. And so I like to buy and hold. And I, I kind of like to go back to my archives every once in a while and kind of check them out, show people them. And uh, yeah, so I just, I, I mainly I like to hold them and then I sell them. So uh, sometimes if there's like a hype shoe, I'll, I'll get it and then I'll just flip it really fast just to make some, some quick cash. Mm -hmm. And to get your hype shoes, do you have to wait outside in line or do you have to wait online? Uh, it's just all online. Everything okay. is all, on, all online through like the sneakers app and then just raffles and stuff like that. So I have, like I do a little homework and I have, you know, uh, certain websites that I go to and like literally ha they have my credit card, it's ready to go. And so I like, I, I have specifically like two credit cards that are just for like flipping shoes. That's dope. And, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I don't use them for anything else except to buy shoes. Uh, but I know like there's a lot, like a lot of people get technical. There's like a lot of bots out there and there's all this software and stuff like that. I, I haven't tapped, to, tapped into any of that yet. Yeah, I was so confused when I had this other guy. He flipped sneakers. No, no, he didn't talk about it. He talked about flipping this normal products, and he talked about bots. I was extremely confused. I was like, "What the heck is a bot?" And then, like, he he's like, "Oh, it's um these programs that kind of get you to buy all these items automatically. You know, you don't have to be waiting. You kind of have someone doing it for you. Where in the click of a button, they get all the new hype sneakers um, in a matter of seconds for you." Yeah, but. it's totally, it's totally automated. And um, I just don't have the patience for any of those programs. I'm not a big tech guy. Mm -hmm. So uh, I would have to have like hire somebody to, to do that. And I, yeah, I don't know too much about that, to be honest. For me, I don't want to jump through hoops. So I just, yeah, so I just, I just do it as a hobby and I get lucky. Uh, like last year, um, I bought over like four grand worth of tennis shoes. Tennis and shoes. yeah, sneakers. Yeah, like over four grand. Oh. Uh, and so out of that four grand that I purchased, 
um, I went ahead and flipped it and I actually made, um, I, I actually doubled my money, which was good. And the same skew, like the same sort of sneaker or different? Just different sneakers. Okay. Just, okay. yeah, there were just different shoes, like a bunch of Yeezys, uh, different uh, shoes like LeBron's. I got um, a bunch of Jordan 1's. So I was just like, I would see them, they would come out and I would buy them really quick and then I'd just hold on to them. And so then I, some of them I would flip them really fast, but the majority of them I would just hold on to. So when COVID hit, I had this like surplus of inventory and I just started selling them. Damn. And uh, that's what kept me afloat yeah. through COVID, which is crazy. The stars so, aligned, right? Yeah, they did. <laughs> they did. Like I said earlier, I could have like uh, filed for unemployment or, you know, applied for one of those SBA loans and stuff, but I didn't. Uh, I just sold my sneakers. Now, I, I, do is, hear, I do want to hear. I do want to hear that story, but I said to ask: Do you also collect pop art? I love the way you have in the back. Oh, so that shout out to my boy Jenkins 2D. Uh, actually, just bought that painting. Uh, it's graffiti art. Uh, he's badass. And then Albert, uh, if you can see the little wasabi uh, up on the top, that's a plant. Uh, he paints those locus, lo local artists. I support, support a lot of local artists. And so I have to cut this one over here. I got this one. This is. Uh, it's like a machine gun, but it's a shark, right? And then That's I have, um, and I have these right over here. That's awesome. So, yeah, <laughs> so I, I, lo I like appreciate art. Um, and so I, I used to draw back in the day um, and I used to mess around with, graf uh, with um, graffiti. Uh, I was doing it like just being stupid, you know, in a ditch <laughs> or something like that. I was not good at all but I always appreciated it. And so, uh, uh, and they're like really good. No, yeah, I think graffiti art, street art, pop art, like all that doesn't, I don't collect that. I like following people online, like on Instagram, creating those sorts of pieces. Mm -hmm. um, and I think it's really dope what they do. Everyone has their own style and it's just really cool. I'm a huge fan. I think it was in New York. This I forgot his name. I really... I think he was a Korean um, pop artist. I forgot his name, but basically in the basement of like the New York mu um, Art Museum, he had a huge exhibition. And from that day on, that really got me into like, into pop art, you know? That's now, cool. Yeah. That's cool. So, okay, now I finally want to ask or hear your, your story. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> so just kind of... Uh rewind some time uh actually um i've always been in sales so crazy like my first job ever was at a sneaker shop so i think that's why i like sneakers so much because growing up i always wanted to get the jordans you know i always wanted to have the, the cool sneakers and uh, my mom she was middle class she worked her ass off she she actually bought me the things that i wanted you know i was a spoiled mm -hmm. kid it, uh, and, uh, I didn't get everything I wanted, but you know, if it was like for my birthday or Christmas and stuff like that. She would go out her way and she would buy me, you know, sneakers. So I would, I remember going to the mall and, and looking at the sneaker shops. I mean, wouldn't it be cool if I worked here? <laughs> could I could sell sneakers and then the money I make, I could go ahead and just buy sneakers. I mean, it would be a dream job, right? Who mm -hmm. would, who wouldn't want to work at a sneaker mm -hmm. shop, right? And so um, I applied, I was young, I was uh, 16 years old and I, I was nervous. I went in there and I asked the guy if he was hiring and he said, as a matter of fact, I am, we just fired somebody. He's like, when can you interview? And I'm like, I can interview today. <laughs> and yeah. so long story short, he hired me um, like two days later, he had me uh, interview with his boss and they just liked my ambition my energy and they were just like you're gonna do good so they, they believed in me so that was my first job ever i was selling sneakers which was cool had friends visit me at the mall it was, it was a dream job right <laughs> and so uh i that's i think that that's where i you know found you know appreciation even more for sneakers is because i worked at a shoe store and i used to see the kicks come in when they first came in i opened a box it was 
like any drop that came, like I saw it first, right? Which was cool. And this was like before the internet and stuff. So mm -hmm. it was like, you're seeing it in real life, right? <laughs> which is cool. And then um, in high school, um, you know, I, I worked at that job for a little bit and then I ended up, um, I don't know what happened. I, you know, I, I ended up having to quit just because they wanted me to work more hours and I just couldn't uh, keep up with school and all that. So I ended up quitting and um, I, I was at school and stuff like that. I started hanging around the wrong crowd. And so I started getting into a lot of mischief, which was, you know, dumb on me because I was just like, you know, wrong place, wrong time. But it was my fault because I was hanging around with all these young, you know, these people that were getting in trouble and I was getting in trouble and stuff like that. So long story short there, I ended up um, dropping out of high school. And I remember my mom telling me, she's like, son, you know, in life, um, you know, if you want to have good, nice things, you're going to have to either work your ass off or you're going to have to go to go to school and get like a degree and get a really good job. Right. Well, I chose to go to work. And so I uh, dropped out of high school, started working. I was working at uh, um, a restaurant uh, for some time, um, waiting tables, busting tables, uh, working as a bar back, doing all that kind of stuff. And then I ended up getting into the vitamin business. Uh, I don't know if you've ever, ever heard of GNC. Um, yeah. They sell vit vitamins. Mm -hmm. So I had a buddy of mine. He was a manager at a store and he hired me and um, I became a manager at a store as well. So I was just selling vitamins. You make commission, you, you sell a bunch of vitamins, you make, you make money, right? I was on like a salary plus commission. And then um, I got tired of that. And one of my friends, I remember playing basketball one time and he was like, Hey man, he goes, are you looking for a job? I was like, yeah. He's like, well, um, we're hiring. It was AT&T at the time. And so I was like, cool. So I went for an interview and I actually, uh, the name of the company was called Singular Wireless. Uh, AT&T had bought them out. So it was like Singular Wireless back in the day. And so I ended up um, working there, right? And so I was working there. I worked there for a good while. Um, I, I kind of became, um, I guess I, I was comfortable and because I was uh, making good money, but I like a degree, you know, like I was just like working and I had that security blanket, you know, so um, I really didn't have any mentors. I didn't have any goals or anything like that. So this one guy comes in one day and he's like, hey, man, he goes, um, you did a really good job helping me out. He's like, um, would you ever uh, get into real estate? And I'm like, man, I don't know shit about real estate. Like, what are you talking about, right? Like, I'm like looking at this guy, like, what is real estate, right? And so I didn't, I didn't act stupid. I was just like, uh, yeah, maybe whatever. I kind of blew it off, right? But he planted that seed that day. And I, uh, I procrastinated for like three years after that. But he planted that seed and I always thought of it. Um, I even called up to um, the, uh, the school. Uh, it's called Champion School of Real Estate. I called them up and I was like, Hey, how much does it cost? You know, like, what do you need and all that stuff? Well, they told me at that time, they were like, you don't need, um, you know, a GD. Um, we actually provide, um, you know, all the credits that you need, you know, college credits and stuff like that. You just need to sit in class, go through the whole, like, I, I think it was like, I don't know. I, I don't remember. It was like 40 or 120 hours. I forget what it was. It was like, it was probably longer than 40 hours. It was like 120, 220 hours. I forgot. He's like, you got to be in class, you got to take quizzes, you got to, you know, take notes, and then you got to have to pass the test, right? I was like, oh, I could do that. But I actually, I just put it on the back burner. Like I said, for three years, I played it. Well, worked, I went and moved up the ladder through AT&T, and I actually got off, offered a position to go out to Albuquerque, New Mexico. And... Uh, I don't know if you've ever been to Albuquerque, New Mexico. It's a great place to visit, but in my opinion, it's not, it's not a place that you want to like live, in my opinion. Um, there's really nothing there. There's a casino uh, and there's a bunch of mountains and you could like, you know, go skiing and stuff like that. But there's really like the city was like really, I think at that time, like the crime rate was really high and it was just, it's, it, it was just awful. I didn't have a good time there. I went there for like three months and I decided to come back to San Antonio. And when I came back, um, they didn't have a management position for me. 
So I went, I had to start from the bottom. I had to start back in sales. So I, I, I start back in sales and I had this micromanager at the time. And I remember like just dreading driving to work, you know, just dreading, just driving to work. Cause this guy was so bad. He would get under your skin. He was just so mean and rude. And I was just like, man, screw this guy, you know, like, and I really wanted to tell him that, but you know, I had, I had responsibilities. I had to pay my bills, you know? And so, um, I remember talking to my mom and she's like, son, you know, I never helped you, you know, pay for, for college. She goes, but if you want to get your real estate license, like I'll pay for it. So I literally, I took my PTO, like my vacation time and I went, I took all the classes. So like yeah. shout out to my mom. She like helped <laughs> me. And so, um, so she, my mom's always been good, good, good to me. She's always helped yeah. me out. Uh, so I ended up, you know, going through all the, the classes, you know, I, it took me like a couple of weeks to do everything. Um, and then I needed to pass my test, right? That was the big key was passing my test. Cause if I pass my test, then I'll get my license. Right. And, um, so my, 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 uh, I had just gotten married. My wife, i she, uh, she, I, I've only been married once. So <laughs> my, my, my wife, she, she, uh, she was like, Hey, I'm going to go to uh, Florida. Right. And so she goes to Florida for this conference and I had this micromanager and he was just being an ass to me one day. Right. And um, I went to lunch. I will never forget this. I, I went to Wingstop. I don't know. Do they have Wingstop where, where you're at? So it's, no. like a, it's like a wing place. Right. So I go and eat some wings and I'm like eating my chicken wings. I'm all pissed off. Right. Because this guy's <laughs> an ass. I'm like, I don't want to go back to work. My wife is out in um, Orlando, Florida at this conference. Right. And so um, I'm like, I want to, I want to quit my job. This is going to be like my second time quitting. Cause that first time was when I was at um, foot action. I had to quit because I couldn't keep up, you know, with school. And this is like the only time, the second time that I quit my job was uh, at AT&T. Uh, and so I went back to work and I just, I, I wanted to tell him something mean, but I didn't. So I just gave him my keys and I was like, Hey man, um, good luck to you. And I was like, I, I quit. And man, it was so like refreshing. Like, like there was so much weight that just came off my shoulders when that happened that I didn't know, like, I didn't know what my consequences were going to be, but I just knew that like, I was at peace, you know, like, like I didn't have that stress anymore. Right. And so um, I called my wife up and like, Hey babe, uh, I just quit. She's like, what? <laughs> So, so she's like, what are you going to do? I'm like, uh, I need to get my license. So, you know, um, I had uh, tried to pass my test and it was crazy. It took me like seven times to, because I was, I was not a, I, I was not a big school guy. And so like studying and all that stuff, like I was, you know, I was so out of the loop for a long time that I kind of lost all that, you know, like I didn't know how to study. I didn't know how to, um, you know, it was like I had to remember stuff. And I remember going, I remember one time, um, I, you, all you had to do is pass with a 70, right? And I, I got a 69. And this was like the fifth time taking the test. I'm like, are you freaking kidding me? Like, I made a 69. Like, I couldn't make that one point. <laughs> and it, it was devastating. Uh, but I finally, like, I think it was after seven tries, I ended up passing. And uh, it was like, it was like the best, one of, one of the best days ever. I started crying literally uh, because I was just so happy that I, like, I finally passed. And so um, and then I was like, man, real estate's going to be easy. I got my license. I'm going to start selling all these homes. And at the time it was right after 08 and 08 was when the market had crashed, right? The real estate mm -hmm. market. Um, and San Antonio, our market, um, I like to say we, we went ahead and rebounded pretty, pretty quickly compared to other cities like Las Vegas, New York, California, like all those cities got hit really, really bad. I mean, these guys were taking a bath in, in foreclosures. It was crazy. Um, but I went to this agency and I didn't, I didn't pick the right agency. You know, I had some 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 good mentors they were teaching me about contracts they were teaching me you know kind of about uh technology with real estate but i didn't have really have a good mentor uh at that time and so if anybody that's watching this if you're thinking about getting into real estate um get a mentor get a mentor for at least two years learn the ropes 
and then go on your own. Cause there's just so much that you're so much time that you're going to be able to um, save for yourself than trying to figure it out on your own. Uh, because this, the, 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 the teams and the mentors, they, they already know all the systems. They, they've been down that road and they will help you and guide you. So I've always learned everything kind of like the hard way. It's kind of just been my way, wave of life. So uh, if you're listening to, listen to this, don't learn the hard way. Okay. <laughs> now, maybe <laughs> that's a good don't. thing. Maybe you have to, you know, that's, <laughs> learning the hard way can be the right way sometimes, you know? Yeah, you're right. You're right. Mm -hmm. That could be. Uh, and I believe everybody's time, you know, everybody's marathon that they're running, you know, it, it comes at their at, at, at specific times of their life. Right. So it's just like staying the course and not giving up. Right. Having that persistence. So, um, you know, I ended up failing, you know, over a year, you know, because I was coming in the, in, in the market when the market was trying to rebound and I didn't have a good mentor. And so I was kind of just trying to like, I had my hands in everything. I was just trying to do too many things all at one time. Like I was trying to do open houses or trying to call expired listings. I tried to knock on doors. I tried to like call friends. Like I was just trying to, I was just hungry. I was hunting for business and I was just literally, I just did not have any success whatsoever. And it sucked, you know, because I thought that I was going to be this rock star real estate and I was just failing, you know, time after time and it sucked. And so I remember, you know, my wife's been my, my number one supporter. She's like believed in me. Uh, and she just told me, she's just like, you know, you, you could do this, you know, I believe in you. And just having that, you know, knowing that my wife was supporting me, knowing that I had somebody, you know, cheering for me and wanted to see me succeed. It just kept me, kept me motivated. And I just kept on pushing. And so, I ended up um, just kind of going online and kind of trying to find like um, the gurus of real estate. And I was, um, you know, taking some like classes and uh, going to some seminars and stuff like that. And it wasn't until like, I want to say my, like my fourth year in real estate. Um, and I, I started to progress, you know, like I, I, I started to close some deals and stuff like that, but I wasn't crushing it. Like I was just kind of just, um, you know, closing a deal here or there. Right. And, um, but it wasn't until like my fourth or fifth year of real estate that I ended up, um, hiring a coach and it was like the best thing ever. Um, he taught me a lot about, you know, structure and talk, you know, taught me about business and, you know, systems and, you know, accountability and all that kind of stuff that, you know, a lot of people that get their real estate license, they think that this type of, um, career, you have all this flexibility, uh, you could sell homes, you can make all this money, and you're basically your boss, um, which is kind of true, but you have to treat it like a job. You know, you have to treat it like a job, you have to have structure, you have to have systems, you have to have, you know, uh, a process of how you do things, right? And um, that's one of the things that I lacked. I didn't have any of those things. And my coach at that time um, taught me those things and he was teaching me he's like hey look, this is what you need to do and he started telling, talking about personal development you know read good books you know listen to good audios uh, you know uh, when you're in your vehicle you know instead of listening to the radio like listen to an audio you know and like mm -hmm. I'm like what like what what are you talking <laughs> about like dude I've never like I, I hated school you know it's like I hated school and I'm over here, you know, you're over here telling me that I need to read books and listen to audios. So I did. It was corny at first, but then, uh, you know, I started just kind of like immersing myself into it. And I started just uh, to, to read books and learning. And you can see right here, I kind of have a little phone up. You can see it right there. Yeah. We've got some books right there. And, you know, I'll go back and read those books. I've read them, you know, multiple times and you always, you know, pick up new things. So that's pretty cool. Um, and so he taught me all that and I, um, I didn't start to, 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 to progress, right. I started to progress and I started attracting agents and agents were, were, were asking me, like they saw my success and they were like, Hey, how are you doing this? Like, would you, would you coach me? Would you mentor me? And, uh, I was like, man, really? Like you're asking me like to mentor you and coach you? Like I, I, it was unbelievable because I, I, I guess I didn't have the confidence at that time, you know, but 
they saw the confidence in me and they, 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 they believed in me. So I was like, yeah, I'll help you out. So I started teaching them the stuff that I learned from my coach. And then I started attracting people and I started to create a team. Um, but one of my biggest faults of creating a team is I didn't hire correctly. I would just, you know, I would talk to somebody from networking and I wanted to help them out. And uh, I would say, well, why don't you just join my team? You know, I'll teach you how to sell real estate. And so I had all these agents. I mean, um, some of them were producing and some of them weren't. Were producing, they learned everything and then they decided to, to leave. They decided to go uh, on their own. Like I gave them all the secrets, yeah. <laughs> I taught them what, what to do, but then they decided like, see you later, peace. Uh, which is fine, you know, like, you know, I'm happy for them, you know, like there was no, um, I, you know, I, I was let down for a minute, but it, I didn't hold a grudge. It was whatever. Um, but then there was people that I attracted that weren't doing anything. You know, I was like having a meeting and, you know, on a Monday and, you know, it was like a, like a, um, like a pump up, like Monday motivation. Like that's what it was. And then they were like, oh yeah, we're, we're in, we're in. And then they wouldn't do anything, you know? So, um, I, 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 I got defeated, you know, I got defeated throughout that whole process because I spent a lot of time with a lot of people and I felt like I failed, you know, because I couldn't keep a team together, you know? Mm -hmm. So I, I was, I was really, um, I was re at, a, at a point I hated real estate just because I went through that process and I was just like, you know what, I'm done. Like I'm done with real estate. I'm, I'm done with it. And the reason why I was I, I felt like I was done with it was because I felt like I failed. Like I didn't grow this team, this, you know, mega team that I wanted. Right. But throughout that whole process, I met people and I connected with people that saw a lot of value in me and they wanted to, to work with me. So I have a buddy of mine. I met him five years ago. And so I'm in contact, we, we literally talk every single day. And uh, he's like, he's been like, one of my, um, you know, uh, other supporters other than my wife, you know, it's him. Like we talk business all the time. And he was like, he believed in me. He was like, dude, he's like, we should, we should partner up, you know? And I was like, oh, man, I've been down that road. I don't know if I want to do that again. You know, I'm telling myself, I didn't tell him that, but I was just telling myself, like, I don't know if I want to do that. Right. And so for like two years, um, he, he was like trying to recruit me to, to partner up with, with him. He's like, look, let's just go have, have um, lunch. I want, you, want to introduce you to my mentor and a business partner and see if we could kind of just talk through some things. I said, sure, why not? So we go and we talk and I meet him. And this guy that he's getting mentored, I mean, he's like a legend in the development game. Um, and he's like 70 years old. This guy like knows everything about land. It's crazy. Like he'll tell you some crazy stuff about land, like who's owned it, like tribes and stuff. Like, it's just stuff that'll blow your mind, right? <laughs> like, they're like, what? Like, how do you know this kind of stuff? So interesting guy, uh, really nice guy. And so he said, um, um, you know, we would love an opportunity to partner up. You know, my, my, my business, well, at that at time, my friend was telling me like, hey, we'd like to partner up. We're, we're doing the land side, but we want you, we want you to help grow the residential side. And um, I kind of thought about it, you know, I talked to my wife about it and I said, you know, what do I have to lose? You know, what do I have to lose to try this? I've been, you know, I've failed so many times, you know? So it's like, well, what do I have to lose? I mean, I could fail again, you know, you know why not? And so I, uh, I ended up um, in March of this year, I partnered up with him and I picked the greatest year, right? COVID, right? 2020. <laughs> and so, so we were like, dude, we had all these big goals. We're like, we're going to crush it. And, you know, I've done pretty well for myself. You know, I've averaged anywhere between 150 to 200 K in commissions per year. I've done that, you know, consistently the past, you know, five years I've, I've been consistent. You know, I could, I, I know how to go and find business. That's no problem. But the problem I've had is building a team, you know, and finding the right people. Right. And so I was like, well, what do I have to lose? This guy's hungry. I'm hungry. Let's partner up. Um, 2020 is going to be badass. It's going to be fun. 
And then, um, so we started hitting the pavement, right? And we start hitting the pavement and start networking and building, you know, relationships and going out, you know, putting our name out there. And we're, you know, we're, we have experience, but there's a lot like this, the niche business that we're in, it's, it's new construction. Um, there's a lot of pl big players in that, that field right there. And, and so the people that are crushing in it, there's only a few people that are, that are in that, in that space. Right. And so, and I'm talking about like the ones that are crushing it, right? Like there's people that dabble in it in new construction, but the people that are crushing it, there's only like a handful of people. Right. And so we're like, we're hungry. We're hungry. We're like, let's go, let's go after it. And so, um, COVID hit and it was like a, it was like the doors and, you know, we were, uh, uh, we were going to be considered essential. Um, we had the lockdown, you know, they started closing the business and, you know, in Texas, um, we didn't get as affected as other states, like uh, other states were a lot more stricter uh, compared to uh, Texas uh, and rules and stuff like that, but it was not as strict as other parts of uh, the country. Uh, which is a huge blessing and then our phones started to ring and people were like hey we want to buy homes we want to sell homes and we're like what like this is crazy like we're in a pandemic and you guys want to buy a house and sell a house and it's like yeah it's the best time to take advantage of it you know like there's a there's a large percentage of people that's um you know what we're going what, what we're excuse me let me back up there's a small percentage of people that see an opportunity when something bad is happening, right? And you have a large percentage of people that are scared, scared, they're, they have the doubts, they're, they're very fearful, they don't know what's going on, right? They, 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 they're unsure, right? So the people that were reaching out to us were the people that wanted to take those risks, that saw an opportunity, wanted to take advantage of it, right? And so it was crazy because all of a sudden, like, we just started creating this momentum, right? And we just started closing all these deals. And literally within six months, this is going to blow you away. Six months, we had over $400,000 in commissions from combined from both of us. And on top of that, we picked up two builder accounts. Wait, what's and, that? What's a, what's a builder account? So, so a builder account is uh, basically you, you manage the inventory for a builder. So and you manage the inventory for a builder, like literally so all, all, the, all the materials? All the, all the houses that they need to put on the market, we, we basically put them on the market for them. We help market their product okay. and we spend money to do that. Um, and you know, it's all relationship based. Uh, these are people that we've been knocking on a different time. Like we, um, I have, you know, a list of people that I have con connected with over, you know, my career. So does my partner. And so we just kind of, we were like this double headed monster. Right. And we just basically leveraged our relationships and we just started hitting the pavement. Remember I was telling you earlier, we were hitting the pavement. But then all of a sudden there was a pause button. We didn't know what was going to go, you know, what was going to happen. I had to start selling my shoes. I mean, we had this argument one day. It was something stupid, but it was the reason why we had this argument was because we didn't have no money. No money was coming in. You know, we we're edgy because we didn't have any, any money coming through. Um, but we squashed it. Um, that was like early, early into um, creating this. We squashed it. We kind of like, said, hey, look, let, let's just keep on pushing. Like this, it's gonna happen. And so within like literally six months, like I said, we've, uh, we've been crushing it, man. It's crazy. It's crazy where we went from zero, not having anything and not being sure about anything to like having two accounts, two builder accounts and, and just closing a bunch of real estate, man. It's nuts, bro. Wait, one sec, one sec. So, so you know, you I was watching a movie yourself, last right? night. Yes. So you don't work yes. for a brokerage contractors. Okay. So yeah, so yeah, we actually um, when he approached me, um, he made it made me an offer to be a partner of the brokerage. So I'm a partner of the brokerage. So everything we do, we're 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 in it together, man. You know, we we got each other's back. We push each other. 
um, you know, we, we, uh, we motivate each other and hold each other accountable and stuff like that. So it's, it's pretty cool. It's pretty cool, man. I'm, right. I'm excited. Just one sec. So, um, from what I've heard, like if you're a real estate, uh, agent or a realtor and you work for a brokerage in terms of the commission, when you speak to someone who's selling the home, you split, you split the commission with that person, right? However, your commission also gets split with a brokerage, but because you and your partner are just working on that brokerage that he owns, you guys get a larger portion, right? Or something along those lines. Exactly. Exactly. So a lot of broker, yes, so a lot of brokerage, they'll put you on a set. And uh, I remember when I first started my first brokerage, I was on a, like a 60, 40 split. So anything, any commission I made, I made 60% and then they took 40%, right? There's some agents that are in a 50, 50 split. There's some agents that are on an 80, 20. There's some agents that all they do is they play a fat, flat fee uh, to their broker every month and they get a hundred percent of their commission. So there's different brokers. They have their different rules. Um, the advantage to this brokerage is that, you know, own the brokerage. And so we don't have to give our money to anybody. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's a huge advantage. I, for the longest time, I, I thought that, you know, I had to be with like this big brokerage because, you know, I didn't have any experience, you know, but in this day, day and age, like, people are going to do this with you because they like you and trust you. Bottom line, if you and trust you, they're going to do business with you. So it doesn't matter with which brokerage you're with, in my opinion, you know, somebody might say it does matter, but through my experience, it doesn't matter. You know, I've gone on listing appointments, I've met clients and they don't even ask me which broker I'm with. They're just like, Hey, um, you know, they'll ask you like, do you have a Zillow profile? Like, are you online? They're going to Google you and they're going to see like your, your, your stats. They're going to see your bio. They're going to see who you are, what you do, you know, what you represent. Um, people are savvy nowadays. They're going to go online. They're going to research you. So, um, you know, back in the day, yeah, maybe it, it made sense to have, you know, a big brokerage to back in you because you don't have any experience known, you know, throughout that city or, or throughout the nation, right? But nowadays, um, if you built your network, you built your business, you built your clientele, um, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter, you know, in my opinion. For sure. I definitely do believe that with the tools we have online, it's fair game. I heard that with brokerages, they do give you a lot of tools to work with that, that's advantageous. But if you have your own brokerage, you keep more of that commission. And if you know what you're doing, if you have those tools, if you know what you're looking for, then you're going to reap most of the rewards. And that's the thing. You had the experience of the brokerage before, right? And now you're working with the partner who you guys own everything. You don't have to split the commissions even further. And it's good that you had that experience so that you can work on your own. Exactly. And in this business, like anybody that's listening to this, like you have to be a hunter, you know, um, you you can't just expect people to come to you. Like you gotta go hunt for business. Um, your, your paycheck at the end of the day is based off your performance, right? So it's like based off your performance, you're gonna, the universe, you know, God is gonna reward you based off your performance, based on out and putting in the work, right? Um, if you're not putting in the work, you're not gonna get the results that you want. Right. And so it, it's the more you put into it, the more you're going to get back. And that's the one thing I, I love about real estate is that there's no ceiling. You know, there's, there's guys that are just making millions of dollars with real estate. Like there's no ceiling whatsoever. And that's a cool thing, right? Like not to have a ceiling, right? You, you get a job, you get a normal job, you're at a salary. Um, you may get, get, you know, some perks, you know, um, um, 401k, you know, interest insurance and stuff like that, but you may get a pay raise, but you're kind of, you're, you're, you're at a certain level, right? With real estate, you could go as far as you want, which is, which I think is cool. Mm -hmm. So when someone wants to buy a home and they Google, they go on Zillow, apartments.com, whatever it is, and they want to buy a property. Now, how do they end up finding you? I know you have to say you're, a, you guys are hunters. You go to the customer, you know, but 
how do you guys, I guess, hunt in what respect? For sure. So it's all relationship based. So any business that you're going to do is relationship based. So it's like, if you do a good job for somebody, somebody's going to refer you out. You can't be afraid to ask for a referral or ask for, you know, recommendation. So if you're new to the game, obviously you're going to have to do, uh, you're going to have to work harder because you have to build up your client base. Right. But once you have, you know, enough closings underneath your belt, you start to get, um, I like to call it is like spokes in your business. Right. So imagine riding a bike. One of my mentors taught me this is like, imagine riding a bike, right. And on your bike, you have spokes, right. And on those spokes, you have different ways to generate business. Right. So it's in your, in, in your, in your field, whatever you're doing, right. It's like putting like a fishing rod into a pond, right. If you have that fishing rod, or if you only have one fishing rod out there compared to having five fishing rods, you're going to have more bites off those five fishing rods versus that one rod. Right. So it's the same thing with your spokes on your, your business is like you have to have different, um, uh, things that you do to generate business. So I'll give you some examples. One is um, I built up a client base. So I'll call my clients, I'll mail them something. They see something from me. They know, you know, that I'm still selling real estate that I'm active in real estate. Then I have referring partners. So I have builders that I work with people that if they know somebody that needs to sell a house or needs to buy refers business. Also call expired listings, homes that didn't sell for whatever reason, um, because you know, the agent couldn't sell or whatever, whatever the reason was, I'll call them and I'll, I'll pitch them. Uh, right now our market is super tight right now. We only have like a month and a half, um, months of inventory. So all the agents that are car calling, you know, the, the sellers are getting like hundreds of agents that are calling. So it's a little bit more difficult to, to, to tap into that. You have to call more times in order to set up uh, appointments. So I don't just keep my fishing rod in just one pond. I have my fishing, I have fishing rods in different ponds to generate business. Okay. I think you're trying to say like, if you have more nets to, in the pond, for example, you're going to catch more fish. If you have more potential. Exactly. Ways, yeah. Exactly. So do you, exactly, exactly. What, do you also utilize social media? I know for any business and real estate as well, having referrals, word of mouth is extremely, extremely important. Um, I spoke to another, she was a realtor and she told me that, yeah, most of her clientele is from just pure referrals and word of mouth. Right. And I think that's extremely, extremely important for, mm -hmm, across mm -hmm. all business, uh, in across all industries. Um, but do you guys also use, other tools to find clients, um, maybe like even social media, for example. Yeah. So we have a fan, we have a fan page. It's for realty group dot, uh, dot com or for realty group, uh, spelled F R A I R E. Um, and so we post content on there. Uh, we do have, we don't have like this big following there, but we'll run some ads and stuff like that. One thing about uh, that I've noticed with social media is it's good. Trust me, like this is how we got connected, right? We got connected through social media. But in my opinion, I feel that um, social media is, there is a lot of saturation. There's a lot of noise. Like there's so many people. Um, and so I like to use my marketing dollars that I know that I know that they're going to be, they're, they're going to go a long, longer way, right? Um, I like using my marketing dollars for people that know me already right? That, that I've already built up that trust, right? So we do post on social media. We use that because we know that we have to put the content out there. We have to put the brandy, but we don't rely on social media because um, you, you, whatever, um, whatever type of um, spoke in your business that you're going to be focusing on, because there's so many spokes for real estate. If you focus on social media, you're going to have to one, put a lot of time and money into it. Right. And so, you know, you know, time is money. Right. Mm -hmm. And so, so with that being said, like I've done the social media, I don't see that as effective um, as some other agents do it. You know, some, some other agents, that's all they do. They, all they do is just focus on social media. They run ads and stuff like that. Our, our type of business is more personable 
it's more relationship based and we've had more success that way um, versus with social media, but we still post, we still, we still run ads, but we don't spend a lot of money there. Mm -hmm. I have to ask, out of just curiosity, um, you know, when you're working on anything, any business and you put in that work, like you're actually like doing constant research every day, you're putting in a lot of time and effort and yes, you can see the results, but once you find a coach, a mentor, that becomes a catalyst where in, in a lot of cases from what I hear from a lot of entrepreneurs is that their progress is just hyper growth. You know, once they meet that mentor and that coach, because there's only so much you can learn, but if you have that one mentor that has abundance of experience, he's there for you along the way to teach you things that you couldn't directly learn from a YouTube video, you know, because just like a classroom, you have a professor and he's teaching 20, 30 students. But if you have that one mentor and he's focused on one person, he can utilize um, really transfer his knowledge as best of his ability to help you propel and accelerate your growth. Now, how important is it for you um, and other entrepreneurs to have a coach or a mentor in your life? Oh, it's super important. You know, like you don't have, you don't know everything, you know what I'm saying? So it's like, why reinvent the wheel, right? When you, you could go to somebody that's already been down that path and has uh, basically learned uh, from their mistakes, right? Uh, and they've, they've basically, maybe they've learned from somebody else, right? That taught them. And they, they're able to share that, that information or that coaching or that mentorship, you know, and, and just pass it down. So it's, it's very, very important to, to find people, make sure you, you surround yourself with people that are, um, that are progressing, right? Uh, there's a lot of people that are, that, that have friends that are not progressing. Like I have some friends that are not progressing in life and I don't talk to them that much, you know, I really don't. Uh, so it's like, you know, who you surround yourself with. So not only is your mentor, it's the, the, the pack, the people that you surround yourself with is, is going to matter. Uh, they say, um, you hang around with five drunk people, guess what? <laughs> You're going to be this, you're going to be the sick person, right? But if you ha hang around with five people that are leveling up, that want to succeed and want to better themselves, guess what? You're going to be the sixth person that's going to be doing that. So it's, it's just like that. It's like who you surround yourself is mm -hmm. important with. Now let's talk about the first coach that you got. So when you got, when you went for the brokerage, when you're working for the brokerage and you had to learn all these things and you were lost and, you know, for a better part of the year, you're, basically going nowhere but once you hired that coach and he told you about personal development listening to audiobooks reading books now how fast was your progress like your progression and how much did you learn and you know he said from that point forward people actually went to you for help to be a mentor um were you describe that moment of like damn like i can actually do this and you know just describe that moment where the hyper growth stage when you found your coach and you were just killing it for sure. So, yeah. So when I, when I found my coach and he was teaching me like his methods and you know, his structure to his business, like coming in at a certain time, making sure you're prospecting, making sure you're following up, you know, just building your pipeline. Like after I like start to learn like his techniques, um, I just saw that I saw like instant growth. Like it was within like 90 days, like, if you're consistent with something, you're going to see the results faster. So it was like within 90 days, I could see the results of, of me getting more clients, you know, and um, closing more deals. So uh, with that being said, um, you know, it was, it was rewarding to, to learn from, from somebody that uh, was teaching me. Obviously, I had to pay him, you know, I was paying him for his knowledge um, because I, you know, a lot of people that are, uh, successful, unless they just have time to do it, they, they want to be compensated. Like what's in it for them, you know, mm -hmm. you know, what's in it for them. Um, so if you're going to reciprocate in one way, uh, like give you an example, I heard a story of a, an agent that, um, a very successful agent and what she did was she would basically go and throw away the trash and clean the office of this one agent. And, she would go in there and that's the way she would reciprocate with him. It's like, I'll clean your office if you teach me your secrets, you know? 
And so either you're going to go do something like that, or you're going to pay somebody. And so for me, I, I had to pony up. I had to pay somebody because I knew in order for me to grow in my business, uh, I needed to invest in myself. And that's by investing into a coach. Mm -hmm. I think, yeah, investing, not that I have a mentor or a coach, but I think without a coach, and if you put in that time and effort, you're going to grow regardless. Now, if you have a mentor, there's going to be a catalyst where you could experience that hyper growth. I think a lot of people, um, I don't want to speak for everyone, but this is just my opinion, where if you hire a mentor who's 70 years old, for example, like, like the mentor that you had before, you might be like, oh, he's very old school. And right now we're in a new digital age where we have social media, Instagram, TikTok, and people are selling their homes. What's this old gentleman going to or woman going to teach me um, mm -hmm. about this new world? But like you said, referrals was their main aspect of business. And once you have that knowledge of how to like talk to people, how to network, I think your mentor is going to be a huge, huge resource in that respect. Definitely, definitely. You know, I kind of feel like social media um, is good and bad, right? It's good because we were able to connect, right? You connected through my buddy Art. He, you know, we started having conversation. We're going to build a, a friendship, right? And I've built a lot of friendships through social media. But I also kind of feel that with social media, uh, it could be a bad thing because you could get these rabbit holes, right? Of information, right? And there's all these gurus out there that are telling you this or that, right? And you could kind of see somebody's self success, right? And you you want their success because it's like all the the glitz and the glamour right and so i feel like um in this day and age that we've lost that personal touch with people if you go out to a restaurant a lot of people they're on their phones right everybody's on their phones like you see a family they're sitting down everybody is disconnected and i believe family is like the most important you know part of life right and you see these people every single day and you basically ignore them because you're interested in somebody else's business or interested in somebody else's, you know, other people that don't know you. Right. And that's why I kind of feel like we're social media. So in my opinion, social media, because it's disconnecting people in that aspect, it's, it's breaking families apart, you know, but at the same token, it's a good thing because it gets to connect people like us together to build relationships. So you have to have that happy medium with social media. You can't let it control you. Um, you have to control it. Um, and so as long as you're controlling it and it's not controlling you, um, you're, you're going you're gonna, to you're gonna do well. For sure. And in terms of like finding a partner, boyfriend, girlfriend, how important is it for someone to find that someone that will support you? Because, you know, during your, your struggle, maybe you weren't bringing, bringing in a lot of money, yet you mm -hmm. wanted to go into real estate. And, you know, it can be very worrisome, you know, very worrying for any family, especially if you have kids. And, you know, if maybe your partner and you are living in an apartment and it's really difficult to pay the bills, but you're pursuing something that you want to do. You know, it can go two ways. Either your partner can really criticize you and tell you to work a regular job instead of pursuing what you really want, like your dream, or mm -hmm. on the other token is just, she'll really support you. And you know, you'll get that extra confidence, that reassurance that no matter what she has your back, he has your back and you can really uh, focus on your craft and see where it goes from there. Now, how important is it to find a partner or a group of friends really to boost your confidence and make sure that they have your back during good times, bad times, and they actually believe in your ambition. Definitely. That's definitely important. You know, having my wife as my number one cheerleader and, you know, having a mom that supports me and believes in me um, and then having friends um, that I get to talk to on a regular basis is so important, you know, because you get to talk about, you know, life and, and business, you know, and if you have somebody that's, you're able to share that, you know, how you feel and, and, you know, share your goals and your, you know, kind of like your vision of what you want to do. And for them to be like a cheerleader for you or like a support, um, you know, it's, it's so important because that's going to help you um, level up. It's going to help you um, because when you, when you talk about it, you know, to somebody, there, there's two different types of people. There's one, you know, people that talk 
and they say they're going to go out. Wait, Isaac, can you hear me? I think uh, we just lagged out for a sec. Or we're still okay, lagging. okay. Oh, sorry, right. you, uh, I just, we got cut off like the past, like a good yeah. six, seven seconds. Okay, so what I was saying is that there's two different types of people, right? There's people that are going to talk a good game, that they're going to do something, and they're just going to procrastinate. They're not going to take action, right? Or you're going to have people that are actually going to talk or they don't even necessarily need to talk. They're just going to go out and do it, right? And it's just taking that action. So having that support structure of people that you know that you can rely on, because it's not going to be easy, you know? You're going to go through a roller coaster, you know? There's going to be ups and downs. But if you can have somebody to talk to you, you know, during your down moments, right? During your moments that you want to give up and throw in the towel, it's so important so important because those people lift you up you know they'll lift you up I, I know my my business partner he was like dude if you just focus on real estate and just focus on it you would crush it right and he was right when i got like laser focused and just started just focusing on real estate and that's it like no distractions just staying in, in my lane i started crushing it right but it, it took somebody to tell me that for me to say, you know what, he's right, you know? So um, if you don't have that type of support structure, go out there and start meeting people, you know, networking, people, ask people, you know, uh, build a group. Um, it's important because that's gonna allow you to um, get up when you fall. Um, or, you know, there's a lot of people that, you know, I, I believe like, we're all, um, our decisions that we, what we, where we're at today is based off of our decisions. Um, I believe that, you know, 110%, you know, because I made a lot of bad decisions in business and I made some good decisions, right? But I'm here where I'm at right now talking to you because of the decisions I've made, right? So you got to decide, right? You got to decide, you know, who am I going to hang out, hang out with? Who am I going to talk to? How am I going to talk to myself? You know, um, am I going to exercise? Am I, you know, like all of those are des decisions, right? And you have, you're in total control. I was telling a buddy this yesterday. I was like, you can't control the weather. You can't control the government. You can't control, um, you know, what's going on in the world. But you know what? You can control the way you think and the way you feel and, and your decisions. That's what you can control. For sure. I think that's uh, what is it? very stoic. You know, you can't control external factors. You can only control like your emotions and, and how you act based on those external factors. Yeah. Yeah. How, well, how many? I always remember it. It's like. I was going to ask how many. <laughs> uh, I was going to ask how many homes have you sold like thus far, if you can remember from like the beginning of time since you started real estate. Oh shit. <laughs> I mean, hundreds man, hundreds, you know, I, I, I don't keep track. Um, I'm not a big guy when it comes to like accolades and stuff. Like, um, I should be like, I should toot my own horn, but see, like, it's all about like serving people, helping people, you know, like uh, I want to help people. Um, there's a quote, I think it's by Zig Ziglar, is if you help enough people get what you want, you'll get eventually get what you, you want, right? So if you, did I say that right? If you help enough people get what they want, you get what you want, something like that, right? And um, I, I really, like at first, like it, it, it sounds like very straightforward, right? Like you help people, like I help you, it'll come back to me, right? But I, I kind of, I lost it for a long time, right? When I heard that quote. And one day I was thinking, and I was like, man, I'm helping people get houses. I'm, I'm helping somebody buy a house. They want to buy a house. Why do they want to buy a house? They want to buy a house because they're probably tired of renting, right? They want to have, they want to have a place that they call home, right? They want to create memories. They want to build a family, right? And like all these things, right? I'm just like going down this list of why do people buy homes? Right. And so I was like, man, I'm helping them get that. 
I'm helping them get that. I'm helping them get what they want, you know? And I didn't, it's so, it sounds so straightforward, right? But I, I, I had lost it because I was, all I was focusing was the money. Yeah. For a long time, I was focusing on the money. I was chasing the money and I had it wrong. And as soon as I stopped thinking like that and I was just starting helping people, just opportunity just started to come. Referrals started to come. You know, things happen. You remind me of, there's this movie I watched not too long ago. It was, it was with um, Tom Cruise, I think. And he was a sports agent. I forgot the name of the movie, but he was a sports agent and he worked for a big agency, had tons of clients, big superstars, and he was making money, right? However, he realized he had like an epiphany where um, he was just in it for the money. He didn't have any real relationship with his, um, with, the, with the athletes, right? With the quarterbacks, NBA players, linesmen. He didn't have any relationship. He was just working with them for the money. And he had this epiphany of like, oh, I don't really know these guys. I should really get to know them. And he wrote this like, uh, not an ultimatum, but this report about how agents, sports agents should really develop a relationship with their customer, with their, with an athlete. He got fired from his agency, right? And he really struggled. But once he really like got that memo, because he wrote it when he was like half drunk. But once he wrote, once he understood that memo of like, okay, I got to really focus on the customer really gets to know him. And during the period of the movie, he basically was like a brother to like, I think a wide receiver in that movie. Right. And, oh, wow. And basically that wide receiver, he was a really good player, but no one really knew he was like a more like a low key player. That wide receiver short, long story short, got a huge juicy contract, uh, the contract that he wanted for years and based off, that one relationship of Tom Cruise um, really caring about that one guy, he got a nice large commission instead of like focusing on a bunch of people nice. for the money. And like you said, you got that kind of message of like, oh, I'm in it for the money in the beginning, but no, I'm helping people build homes, you know? Yeah, build, no, building no, I mean, the future. Sorry. Yeah, helping building people future. build memories, yeah. Um, build memories, building their future, yeah, man. And I, I think that's when um, a lot of people get lost because they, they, they want to have the success overnight. Right? They want to see this and they want to, to have the nice things and stuff like that. But you know, nothing wrong with having nice things in life, but you got to put in your time and, and you, you got to serve a servant heart, you know, to your clientele, to your, your customers. And the cool thing is once you peel the onion back and you start to develop these relationships with these people, they become your friends. You know, and, and that's that's one of the things that I love about real estate is I get to meet all their people. You know, I've sold um, a house in my first ever sold was like sixty thousand uh, dollars. The most expensive house I've ever sold was close to, to four million. It was like three point three point seven million. Um, here in San Antonio, San Antonio, like. Homes, the average price point is like around 250. You know, that's the average price point. But throughout my career, I've sold different price points. I've sold to wealthy. I've, I've sold to people that, you know, are living paycheck to paycheck, you know. Um, and if, as long as you treat everybody the same, you know, and you have that servant heart, um, good things happen. You know, you, you get repeat business, you get referrals. Uh, people, um, you know, say good things to you. you. Build these relationships. They invite you to barbecues. They, they, um, they're just, you know, it's just you build these relationships and these are friendships. Like I have clients. I have a client that relocated from um, New Mexico, and I mean, if it, if it, if COVID wasn't around, I'd be at the house eating. Uh, she loves to bake. She loves to cook. Uh, they're like in their seventies, and they're just a sweet couple. And like, I, I love them. They're awesome. And, but we can't, we can't, we can't, you know, connect right now because of COVID, you know, just safety purposes. But um, if COVID wasn't going on, I would be at their house eating right now. Hmm. No, I think that's a really good point. And, and that's the one thing. Sorry. Um, I was going to, I was going to say that, you know, I spoke with the NL, 
I think two or three realtors, real estate agents now, and they told me like exactly what you're saying. Like most of their business comes from referrals, really having that human engagement, human interaction, and you know, mm-hmm. not just utilizing like Facebook ads, not basically looking at the transactional uh, figures, mm-hmm. more of like the humanistic side of things. And from there you build a relationship and things come to you now. For sure. For sure. And we can't get, we can't lose that. I know there's a lot of young, you know, entrepreneurs out there that are really good with technology. They're really good at, you know, getting leads and stuff like that. And it's like, they, they look at the metrics and they have all these, you know, um, you know, uh, graphs and stuff like that. And, you know, that's all cool, you know, uh, conversion and, and running ads and knowing how to do all that. But you gotta, you gotta, focus on your, your customers. Mm-hmm. You got to take care of your customers. You got to get to know them. Right. Because I believe like you meet somebody you never know because they could open up a door that you would never know. You know, they could, they can introduce you to somebody that you would never know, you know, and that's the cool thing about it. If you just stop, get to know people, talk to them, build a relationship, you never know if you're kind to somebody and you just, you never know what that person's going through. You know what I mean? They, they could be going through a hard time and you just gave them, you know, opportunity to talk and listen and, and share. And then they could have had a bad day or, or something like that. Or, or maybe they just, they appreciate the time. You know? So I, I think for, for the younger generation that's listening to this, is just definitely, um, you know, build those relationships and nurture them and, 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 and grow them. For sure. And I think that for a lot of entrepreneurs, and I think I can speak for them as well, because I had the same sensation of, you know, going through tick, not TikTok videos, but YouTube videos, video after video, really um, learning from these entrepreneurs and being happy about about their stories, about what they're doing. And I'm like, wow, this is really cool what they're doing. They're young, they're making money and they're happy doing it, right? But there's a little side to that coin where they're, I guess that I'm gonna be really honest here. You can get jealous watching all these entrepreneurs killing it on YouTube video after video. And that makes you think like, wow, I really gotta do this. I gotta step up my game. And that can bring unwanted emotions such as jealousy, such as, um, you know, anxiety, because that makes you feel like you want to do something. And, you know, sometimes you chase that shiny object that in reality you don't like. So it's important, especially with TikTok, there's so much content, uh, not just on TikTok, but Instagram, YouTube, to really focus on what you want. Take these videos with a grain of salt, learn from them, but, you know, you got to control your emotions because it's very easy to, you know, be like, just be hypnotized by the success. And for I'm sure, pretty sure, for sure. You know, you can be like, oh, I sold hundreds of homes. But in reality, you went through a lot of struggle. You went through different mentors, mm-hmm. coaches, and it's not an easy road. Now you got to the point where you are now because you've been through those, through those trenches. For sure. Yeah, a lot of people see the finished product and they, wanna, they want that finished product, right? Mm-hmm. And it's easy to get... Um, go down that rabbit hole. Um, trust me, um, I, I disconnect, disconnected my Facebook page because I was going through rabbit holes and like seeing other people, and I, it was a, it was, it was really um, messing with my mind. So I was just like, you know what? Um, I don't have time for that. You know, I don't, I really don't have time for it. I just need to focus on me, right? Um, focus on me and focus on my family. That's all I need to be focusing on. That's it. And once I started to stay in my own lane and started to like um, el- eliminate the distractions, things start to get better for me. Mm-hmm. And so a lot, you know, anybody that's listening, you know, is just like stay in your lane. Don't worry about what other people are doing. You know, don't look at the shiny objects. Don't get distracted. Don't, don't, you know, don't, let the noise affect you because if you let that noise affect you, it's going to hold you back from going after what you want. 
it's going to hold you back because it's going to paralyze you because you're going to be looking at that and it's going to be shifting your mind somewhere else versus if you're just focusing on yourself and you're not worrying about all that stuff and you're just staying in your lane. Um, I always tell my business partner, we've done quite good for six months. Would you agree? For sure. I mean, yeah. For six months. Yes. <laughs> but my, my, my partner, he's, he's younger and he wants to have like even more. Right. And I say, look, man, you got to be grateful for what you have where you're at right now and you just got to be grateful. And on top of that, Rome wasn't built overnight. You know, I always tell them that Rome, Rome wasn't built overnight. And if you have that mentality and you always check yourself and you go back to saying, Hey, you know, Rome wasn't built overnight. You know, it's, it's not a, it's not a sprint. It's a marathon. Right. And you remind yourself, you're just going to, you're just going to, your trajectory is going to keep on going up because the more you learn and serve and get to get, get to get better, you're it's you're all, there's only way one way up. It's 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 the top, right? But if you're not doing anything, you're gonna stay at the bottom. For sure, I think you gotta just continue grinding, and it's, it can be really difficult, you know, to look long term and build your empire. Everyone, from what I hear and from what I see, everyone wants things fast and now. You know? Yeah. And yeah. It, it's just a mentality that a lot of people have. And I had that mentality too. And right now I'm like, okay, you know what? I'm going to see where this takes me doing this podcasting, writing the articles, creating this digital media company. Um, and I like it and I enjoy the process. And that's why I'm not worried about the short term thing. I'm just happy what I'm doing now. And if it goes well, it goes well. I'm happy what I'm doing now. And I think it relieves a lot of stress because if you're always looking for that next buck, if you're always expecting that next buck the next week, the next day, then you can be very, very anxious. For sure, for sure. And that's a good way that, you, that you're now, you're grounded in that aspect. Uh, but like I said earlier, like just don't let that noise affect you. I know that's easier said than, than done, but you know, you're know you in charge of your thoughts and your emotions and how you think, right? So just stay on that trajectory. Uh, and you said something a while ago, you, you're enjoying what you do. You love what you do. You know, I love what I do. And mm -hmm. as long as you can love the process and enjoy it, you're, you're doing, you're, you're going somewhere with it. But one of the things I could say is like, sometimes it may seem like you're not, you know, there or where you want to be and you might want to just give up. That's the point where you got to keep pushing, you know, is to keep, you know, keep going because there's those doubts that come creep in, right? And, it, and it'll tell you like, oh, you're wasting your time, you know, like, what are you doing? Like, you shouldn't be doing that. Or like, hey, you know, like, maybe try this out or whatever, right? But if you just stay grinding and you get better, guarantee it in, in a year from now, you're going to have all this knowledge that you've gained by interviewing people, getting to know people, networking, versus if you didn't do it. And if you would have gave up, right? For sure. Yeah, I'm learning so much. Like, to be honest, I'm not super into real estate. My brother is. He wants to like learn to invest in, in you know, in homes and apartments. But I like the idea of it. But just talking to people that know their stuff, learn, listening to their stories, you know, I just get that knowledge. Like some knowledge is transferred from you to me. You know, telling your story and how you got those clients and your hardships and just telling me like you got to continue doing what you're doing and you know you just naturally learn and I have like this library of knowledge of different entrepreneurs telling me their stories how they got their businesses going their successes their failures and anyone listening to and it's not only this podcast just many podcasts many stories out there in the world like if you really take the time to listen to their stories and you know learn what their experiences were I know the best the way to learn is by doing things. But if you can really understand what they're saying, then it's going to be beneficial. You know, of oh, course, definitely. Like, there's times where like your, your parents be like, oh, don't do this because you're going to get hurt. You don't listen. Mm. But once you fall down and scrape your knee, you're like, oh, okay, now I know why I shouldn't do this because I got hurt. Same thing for, I think, a business. You know, you can hear these stories. And if you, as long as you really listen to them and understand what their pain points are and apply that to your to your business, 
um, you're not going to get that scrape on your knee. But sometimes you have to learn the hard way to go to the next level. Exactly. You said something that, that, that um, I remember reading a book and they said that, you know, we've been told, basically conditioned um, the word no ever since when we were, you know, a baby. You know, like, don't touch that. You know, it's hot, right? Or, or don't do that. Or no, you know, or stop. You know, like, it's, it, we've been conditioned. And it's not that we've been conditioned, you know, on purpose this by uh, you know our family members our mother my our, our dad you know it's because they were conditioned right um and, and it's just been something that's been conditioned 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 right so it was i forgot what the number was but it was like by the age of five you're told no like so many times right and so you know if you go to you know age you know 18 and you graduated high school Imagine how many no's you've gotten because they're like, mom, I want to go out with so-and-so. No, you know, mm -hmm. or mom, I want, I want this, th these shoes. No. Right. So it's like, no, 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 no. You get the picture. Right. So what does that do to us conditionally? When we want to go after something or we want to do something, we've been conditioned to so many times that are mentally, we don't even know this, but our, our, our subconscious mind is telling us no, not to do it mm -hmm. because it's something that we don't, we don't know what's going to happen. Right. It's, it's the fear of unknown. Right. So it's crazy. I was reading that. Uh, I forgot which book it was, but if, if you, if you look at that perspective and, 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 and see it that way, it's like, man, we definitely need to change how we are teach our kids, you know? So instead of telling your kids, no, be like, Hey, um, let's try this this way because it's going to be you know it's you're not going to get injured right it's like the word you use versus telling somebody no 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 right so anyways that's another sorry no, no, yeah. rabbit, rabbit no it's out. cool because i think um just to like finish you here subconsciously your you know your subconscious mind has so much influence on your actions and you're not going to be you're not going to really yeah. notice it unless you study yourself right um, consciously, you can control yourself, obviously, but subconsciously, there's so many influences that you don't even know. Like you said, in your example, you have so many no's early in your life that subconsciously, if you want to do something, there's that little thing telling you, don't do it because X, Y, and Z. And, you know, as long as you can kind of study yourself, understand, understand yourself, and most importantly, understand your subconsciousness to the best of your abilities, um, and shift that focus on to things that will help you propel in life, then I think that's very beneficial obviously but that's extremely difficult to like control your subconsciousness and reflect on things that make you i guess not propel that's for lack of a better term yeah but yeah exactly. So Isaac, exactly i think we had a really dope conversation here i love your, <laughs> your, your your story um where can like people find you and hit you up like what social media platforms are you using uh, so right now I'm using um, my my first last name's my first name's Isaac spelled I S A A C last name's T O R R E S. If you spell my name backwards, it's Surat uh, Kasai. I don't know how you pronounce it, but it's my name backwards. That's my Instagram handle, uh, and that's pretty much all I use right now. I'm off Facebook. I'm not on TikTok. Um, you know, that's my platform. So hit me up on there, DM me, um, friend request me, uh, I'll accept you. Um, and that's pretty much it, you know, or you just hit me up. You can look me up online. My phone number is online. Uh, you can just call me. Uh, if you want to talk, just hit me up. I don't mind sharing with you my experiences, what I've learned in my life. You know, I believe if you help somebody out, you know, it's going to, it's going to help they're, they're going to help somebody too, you know, by what you, you share. So uh, I'm a big believer in that. For sure, bro. I really appreciate you being here on the show. Yeah, man. It was good. It was good. I, I needed to, to really uh, decompress and kind of just let a lot of stuff out because I just been on a grind. I've been staying in my lane and I uh, just been focusing on work, man. So it's good to just decompress and just chill and have a good vibe discussion. It was good. For sure, man. I think we're only human and, you know, we can't work like robots every time. You got to decompress, <laughs> that's right? For, that's for <laughs> sure, man. That's for sure. Well, you take care, brother. Hi, you too, man. Take care, right? Wait, don't All leave right, it.